talk about an interesting subject today. It's called Sheep Among Wolves. <laughs> it's the, let's see, it's the fourth in our warfare series. So the title is Warfare, Sheep Among Wolves, or is it Wolves Among Sheep? <laughs> so <clears throat> we've been talking about war. The body of Christ is, you know, perpetually at war. We have enemies. Um, <clears throat> the Bible talks about the devil is like a roaring lion seeking whom he may devour. So I just uh, encourage you to look at all of these. We're, it looks like we're going to have six or seven uh, different parts in this warfare series. But just look up war, warfare on YouTube or anywhere and look at these. We talk about the different types of, of warfare, uh, many different um, behaviors, arenas for war. Uh, and, and victory in Christ. So Matthew 10, 16 is that famous scripture, Behold, I send you out as sheep in the midst of wolves. Therefore, be wise as serpents and harmless as doves. Now, all through this teaching, just think, where do you see yourself <laughs> in this section? All right? We're going to start out, <clears throat> Behold, I send you forth as sheep. So we're going to talk about sheep. Now, oftentimes the Lord uses sheep as an analogy. We know that David, you know, was a shepherd and uh, loved the sheep. And we know that shepherds are supposed to love the sheep. But when you talk about a, a true sheep, I mean a real sheep, <laughs> they're timid, kind of defenseless creatures. Um, they're, they're unsuspecting. These are the, kind of the characteristics Sheep are unsuspicious, I guess is the best way to say that. They're pretty much gentle, meek, um, kind of lowly of heart. Translate this into uh, the spiritual analogy as we talk about this. Sheep are easily accosted because of this. They're easily attacked. And, of course, we know that the wolves attack them quite often. <clears throat> They're vulnerable. And all of these, these last ones, uh, these last characteristics mean that they're approachable. You know, they're vulnerable. Uh, their motivation is to follow, not to lead. Um, their demeanor is pretty much quiet. Um, they don't really have any skills. <laughs> sheep in the pasture, they're, they're, they're good at being sheep. They're fairly good at following the shepherd um, and they're valued for really what they are, which is wool, um, the, the wool from, from the sheep. So all of that to say Sheep, let's read that scripture again in the Amplified. Matthew 10, 16 in the Amplified says, Behold, I am sending you out like sheep in the midst of wolves. Be wary and wise as serpents and be innocent. Now, the Greek word for innocent means harmless, guileless, and without falsity as doves. So that's really the way sheep are. They're, they're, they're innocent, harmless, and, guile, and guileless. Um, so doves, sheep, the same kind of analogy. So Matthew 10, 6 talks about going out because the, the scripture in Matthew 10 says, I send you out. God the Father, Jesus the Son, sends us out as sheep. So verse 6 in, in, ten, in chapter 10 says, but... Go to the lost sheep. So we go to the lost sheep. We go to the ones who need us. We go to the ones who have lost their way and need, need guidance. And then verse 7 says, as you go, preach the kingdom. Let them know that the kingdom of heaven is at hand. Let them understand what the kingdom is, what the principle is. And what is your motivation? Verse 8, heal. Heal the sick, cleanse the lepers, cause miracles to happen, raise the dead, massive miracles, cast out the demons. Freely you have received, freely give. 
So we have received all of these things, all of these miracles from Jesus, our good shepherd. He's the good shepherd. <laughs> and so we are to be like him. So we are to be good shepherds going out as he has gone out. And it goes on to say, don't worry about money. You know, don't, don't depend on others for it. Don't take extra stuff when you go because they'll receive you in my name. They'll provide for you. That's verse 10. Verse 12, when you go into a household, greet it. If the household is worthy, let your peace come upon it. But if it's not worthy, let your peace return to you. I've, po I've pondered that verse for, for some time. And I feel like what the Lord is saying there is we go and, and if where we go doesn't receive us in the manner that would be pleasing to the Lord, we keep our peace. We, we don't allow it to disturb our peace. We don't allow it to make peace leave us. We don't, we don't leave with offense, but we leave with our peace. So we go in the name of the Lord with the character and the nature of the Lord. And so we keep that peace. Rejection is, is pretty much of a, of a problem uh, and in most of us who are, who are sheep. And so it's hard to not receive offense. Um, verse 14 says, if they won't receive you, if they won't hear your words. You know, there's a scripture to uh, Elijah the prophet. No, no, I think it was Ezekiel. He said, he said, the Lord said to him, you will go whether they hear or whether they refuse. So when he sends us out, then we go out whether they hear or whether they refuse. We don't take it personally. We're going out in the name of the Lord. So this scripture in verse 14 says, then shake that dust off your feet. In other words, shake those emotions off. Shake that rejection off. Shake the, the, the fact that they did what they did or even how they did it. You know, shake that off. That's what that means. That's not a thing that's like, oh, you know, they're, they're bad people. So just, you know, it's not about that. It's not, we don't war against flesh and blood. This is a type of warfare. Being sent out is, is a type of warfare. That's why he says, I send you out as sheep among wolves because there is going to be that warfare. And, you know, for most, of, most ministers, they have to be sensitive because they're sensitive to the Spirit. I'm a prophet. I have to be sensitive to the voice of the Lord, to the Spirit of the Lord, to the, to the purposes and the, and, the, and the commands of the Lord. And so as a result, I have to be sensitive. I can't develop a hard exterior. But so therefore, we are vulnerable. We're open. We're sensitive. We're to be godless. You have to be open. And, and rejection can be hurtful. But the Lord says, take your peace away with you. So we take that peace of the Lord, but we return with it. And so when the gifts of the Spirit flow and discernment flows, also this is another, uh, another thing, is that the Spirit of wisdom, the Spirit of uh, the Word of wisdom, the Word of knowledge, we learn things about people that are negative by the Spirit. And so we can't take that to ourselves. We can't we can't judge with our mind, okay, they're this and they're that. We don't do that. We don't do that. The Lord brings us those knowledge and the, the, the things, those, those pieces of information he brings to us. We take it back to him in prayer. And if he doesn't give us a direction or tell us how to use it or why to use it or whatever, then we shake it off. That's another part of that dust. It's, we just shake that off. Because many, many things, when we become an open pipe in the spirit realm, we learn a lot of things that oftentimes we wish we didn't know. <laughs> and so, but he protects us when we go out as sheep among wolves. Psalm 105 verse 13 says, They went from one nation to another, one kingdom to another people, but he permitted no one to do them harm. He rebuked kings for their sake, saying, Do not touch my anointed ones and do my prophets no harm. So you and I, it goes both ways. We may go out as an anointed one. We may go out as a prophet. And, and there may be wolves out there doing stuff. But, but at the same time, we 
receive, and we'll talk about this in a minute, we receive those prophets in the same way and those anointed ones in the same way and we do them no harm. We don't touch them. We always, as sheep, going out by the Lord, we rejoice at the opportunity to go in the name of the Lord. Apostle Paul said to rejoice always and look at what he went through. I mean, man, he, he, wolves caused him a lot of problems. <laughs> so 1 Corinthians 15 Verse 57 says, But thanks be to God who gives us the victory through our Lord Jesus Christ. So be steadfast, immovable, always abounding in the work of the Lord, knowing that your labor is not in vain. Behold, I send you out as sheep, wise as serpents, harmless as doves, in the midst of wolves. So in that case, speak by the Spirit. Even in your natural conversations when you're visiting with the leaders and you're visiting with the people as you go out or even as you go into prayer groups and you go, you know, here and there in the body of Christ and in the kingdom, speak by the Spirit. Don't trust favor. Don't believe your press. Don't believe people that, oh, you're the most fabulous person I've ever seen. You're the most incredible prophet. You are blah, 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 blah. That's good press. Where there's good press, there's bad press. <laughs> so just don't believe your good press or your bad press. Go by the Spirit, walk by the Spirit, listen and discern by the Spirit, and avoid pride at all costs because we know what the Bible says about pride. It says it goes before a fall. We avoid pride and we, we you know, if we find hatred and je jealousy, <laughs> often wolfy sheep, Wish they had your microphone <laughs> and, and your position of authority. But, but don't fear because your fear is the fear of the Lord. But trust God in all things. So then when sheep receive other ministries or other sheep, we honor them because we as sheep, we understand that, that position. In Matthew 10 verse 40, he said, He, he who receives you receives me. And he who receives me receives him who sent me. So we go and we are sent in God's stead, guileless and open and vulnerable. So when, when, when we go, they need to receive us in that manner. Verse 41, he who receives a prophet in the name of a prophet shall receive a prophet's reward. And he who receives a righteous man in the name of a righteous man shall receive a righteous man's reward. So we honor those who come and, and then we honor as the other end when we go. They need to receive us with honor. And verse 42, whoever receives one of these with, a, with only a cup of cold water in the name of a disciple, I say, he shall no, by no means lose his reward. <laughs> So in unity of the Spirit, we go in and out, in and out. And we're going to talk about the wolves here in a second. But, um, <laughs> uh, but we go giving as Christ did, like-minded one to another. Romans, Romans 15, verse 5 and 7. So we go giving ourselves as Christ did. Now, it's so interesting. I want to read you this scripture. Now may the God of patience and comfort grant you to be like-minded one to another according to Christ Jesus that you may with one mind and one mouth glorify God, the Father of our Lord Jesus Christ. Therefore receive one another just as Christ also received us to the glory of God. That's the purpose, is for the glory of God. Now, that word receive there means to take to oneself. And its root indicates a strong action toward us that in Christ, God literally took us. He took hold of us even while we were yet sinners. And by that act of acceptance or taking us or receiving us, He released the grace of God and set in motion all the powers of redemption and Christ and the character and the nature of Christ. So God's glory was released as a banner over us by being received. So that's how we receive those who come in the name of the Lord. That's how we go expecting 
to be received and taken to themselves. I've been in many, many nations over a period of 30 years or more, and I've been thousands of miles from home in different cultures with different languages and different ways of doing things. And it's, it's a great comfort to be received with honor as though they take you to themselves. That's a, there's no greater joy than, than to have that fellowship, that divine exchange. That's what it is, is a divine exchange because then you refresh one another. Romans 15, 32, that, that I may come to you with joy. He's talking about I'm coming to you with joy by the will of God and may be refreshed together with you. So we go out and we are received when we go out and all of us like-mindedly are refreshed together as we honor one another just because we're a part of the body of the Lord. Romans 16, 2 says that you may receive her in the Lord in a manner worthy of the saints and assist her in whatever business she may need. So kindness, courtesy, and love and and no judgment. You know, there's, there's, we've, got to, we've got to get judgment out of the thing, but we do have to have dis- discernment. So when we hear those things by the Spirit, we don't judge because the Bible says for what you judge, you will be judged. By the measure you used, it will be measured back to you. So we don't go in judgment, but we go in love in Christ's stead. Now, Let's talk about the wolves. (laughs) The definition of a wolf is any of a various large predatory uh, group of mammals. They're destructive. Now that's an operative word there. To game and livestock, the sheep. They're fierce, rapacious, and destructive. So the characteristics of wolves, in addition to that, is their cunning that, that speaks of motives, I mean serious motives. And their motive is to eat and destroy the flesh. <laughs> They're conniving. They attack the weak and the helpless. They will do anything to reach their objective. Their motivation, now remember the motivation of the sheep is to follow. The motivation of the wolf is to attack. <laughs> and they'll do anything to get there. Their demeanor is moving and loud and agitated, and they run in packs that are like that. Their behavior is divisive. Um, We need to just interject here. Romans 16, 17 says, you know, note those. Take note of those who cause divisions and offenses contrary to what you've learned and avoid them. See, avoid the wolves. That's all I got to say. (laughs) If you perceive someone to be a wolf, suspicious, this is more of their characteristics, suspicious, always sniffing around looking for trouble. (laughs) They're rapacious, that's aggressive and greedy, voracious, devouring big quantities of stuff, and ferocious means cruel and violent. Now, there are wolfy sheep. There are sheepy wolves. I mean, <laughs> I mean, there's no, there's no, you know, hard and fast uh, division here. But oftentimes, unfortunately, you find when you have invited someone in that it's it's a wolf who has come in, into your fold. If you're a shepherd, they've come into your fold. Matthew seven fifteen. Beware of false prophets who come to you in sheep's clothing but inwardly they are ravenous wolves. Now that's the scripture, Matthew 7, 15. So we'll know those wolves by their, by their fruits. Look at their fruits. Do they announce and advertise themselves constantly? Do they recount their great exploits? Do they major on large offerings? Do they demand certain treatment? Or are people changed eternally? Is the presence of the Lord the main thing you remember about them? Do you, do you know the Lord better because they came? We need to discern. We need to discern people who come as wolves in sheep, sheep's clothing because we are responsible for those in our charge. We are responsible for the sheep, just as David watched over the sheep. 
just as Jesus is the great shepherd who guards the sheep. So wolves, then if you go in, though I send you out in the midst of wolves, they greet ministers with suspicion, with ingraciousness. They're grudging in their welcome. They're self-centered. This is my place. This is my right. These are my needs. These are my people. This is my service. This is my way of doing things. This is my kingdom. That's, that's a wolf who sees a gift in someone and brings them in. They're negative. There's, there's insecurity and, and intimidation, and so they have false exaltation. So the more you're exalted, the more insecure they feel. In other words, if you go and do a good job, even though they invited you in, <laughs> they don't like it because you're doing well, and now the sh their sheep, poor people, <laughs> are, are being looking at you more than they look at the one who is the wolf inviting you in. So a good shepherd protects the sheep and keeps them away from all harm. So you and I, we need to examine ourselves and we need to make sure that those characteristics are not in us as leaders. They're not in us as sheep in the sheepfold of the kingdom. We need to crucify the wolf in us, crucify that grasping thing, that competitive spirit, that thing that needs to be, uh, needs to be uh, uh, seen and, and adulated and needs affirmation. We need to crucify all that and go back to that harmless as doves, going out in the stead of Christ, going out in the love of Christ, going out in the confidence of He who is in us, Behold, he sends us out. And I heard the voice of the Lord saying, Whom shall I send and who will go for us? And then I said, Here am I, send me. That's Isaiah 6, 8. And so God sends us out. And the call of God according to the nature of God is when we go out in obedience and it depends entirely on what God has, has, has engineered. God has called my name many times throughout my life. One time when I was probably six years old, I literally heard it with my natural ear. And I was staying with a woman in her home while my mother was at work. And I was out in the yard in the middle of the woods, in the middle of the country playing. And I heard my name. And I ran in and I said, did you call me? And she said, no. And I, I went back outside and I heard it three times. And three times I went in and she said, no. And so the third time, this, uh, this, this country lady, Baptist lady, said, Well, honey, that must have just been the Lord calling your name. I was very young then, but I never forgot it. God is calling our name. And the important thing is not why did he call. That's what our, our mind wants to know. The most important thing is that he called. So it's his purposes through us. It's his training and his talent. It's not, he doesn't call us because of ambition and because of self-seeking and because of our training. But he really is calling us to be crushed because to be wine to drink, we have to be crushed. He will put us like he did Moses and Jonah and Peter and Joseph. He'll put us in the valley of humil humiliation. But he's mustering an army for battle. There is warfare, and we go out as sheep among wolves. So to train his army, he'll stamp out all that wolf in us. He'll stamp out all the wayward ways, all the ways that we want to wander. You, like sheep, have gone your own way. Yet it's the Lord's will, Isaiah 30, 53, to crush him and cause him to suffer. And although the Lord makes his life a guilt offering, he will see his offspring and prolong his days and the will of the Lord will prosper in his hands. You and I go out so that the will of the Lord prospers in our hands. And so we truly listen. The voice, the shepherd says, my sheep hear my voice and the voice of another they will not follow. And so we hear and obey the voice of truth, that still small voice, sometimes just a gentle leading 
inside of us. It's hardly ever with our natural ear. But we take every thought captive and we still our soul. And if we're truly the sheep of his pasture, there'll be the, there won't be the backbiting and the slander and the accusing of the brethren and gossip and jealousy and hatred and competition. What kind of sheep are we? We are wise and harmless. Wise and harmless. Wise means thoughtful, perceptive, discerning, discreet, innocent, simple, harmless, vulnerable. It's a season of repentance in the body of Christ. God's looking for leaders who will be sent out like sheep obedient and willing and harmless. No matter the call, the fame, the persecution, the rejection, the dishonor, we go and we pour out all that God is in the love of the Lord. Luke 4, 18 through 19. The Spirit of the Lord is upon me because He has anointed me to preach the gospel to the poor. He has sent me to heal the brokenhearted, to proclaim liberty to the captives and recovery of sight to the blind, to set at liberty those who are oppressed and to proclaim the acceptable year of the Lord. That's why we're sent out. That's why at Isaiah, when he saw the Lord high and lifted up, he said, here am I, O Lord, send me, send me. Because the mighty one, the splendorous one, the magnificent one, the powerful one, the all-wise one wants to partner with us and send us out to accomplish his purposes in the earth in the midst of whatever warfare there is. As sheep among wolves, so be it. We go out to accomplish as fire carriers and light bearers speaking the word of God, bringing life to the nations. We go out because he sent us, even though we go out in the midst of great war. Rejoice in the Lord and rejoice always because he calls our name. He calls us. We are called and we are received by him and he sends us out in his great name. Amen. Beautiful one, beautiful